Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to show you how to build a decision tree regressor model. Let's dive in. So first I've went ahead and cleaned the data and split it into training and test data sets. So I'll just go ahead and show you a preview of our training data set. This is what it looks like. And then a preview of our test data set is similar to our training data set. So as you can see right here, this data set has categorical values. So here we have status and under status, we have developing, developed, developing, developed, right? And then that's pretty much the only categorical data that we have. Now, when we are running a model, our model expects numbers and not text. It doesn't really understand text. So we have to convert this text into numbers. And that's where encoding comes in. In a different video, I showed you how to encode your data, but I'm also going to do it here. So quickly, if we do something like xtrain dot d types, you see that everything is either a float or an integer, and status is the one that's an object. We need to convert this object into a integer or float. And to do this, we are going to be using one hot encoding. So in a different video, like I said earlier, I explained how to use one hot encoding. But in this, I'm just going to do it quickly. So before we can do one hot encoding, we first have to install one hot encoding library. And then we do import category encoders as uh, CE. Now we instantiate the in encoder. And then we use category names equal to true. That's the only thing we really want to do here. And then we do our x train 2 is equal to encoder the fit transform x train. And then we do the same transformation to our test data set. Now, in this situation, I'm doing this really quickly. Like I said earlier, go watch the video on one hot encoding if you want to learn more about this. Now, let's get a preview of what our data looks like now. As you can see, we no longer have a single column like this. We no longer have a single column for status. We now have multiple columns for status developing, status developed and they have a one or zero. So we've taken our object and turned it into integer. So that's the first step I'm gonna do here. Now to actually build the model. So we do from sklearn.tree, import decision tree regre regressor. So this is the documentation for scikit learn decision tree regressor. You can come here and you can see the different parameters that you can use. But in this video, we are just going to use the default parameter. And then you see different attributes that you can get access to after you've run the model. And this future importance is going to come in very handy when I go to explain how to explain your decision tree model. And if you come down here, you can see that this decision tree library has different method that you could use. It has a fit method, a score method to return the R2 determination of coefficient, coefficient of determination score from the model. You can get, you can use it to do predictions and you can use it to fit your model. And then there's this other method that you can also use. So I just wanted to quickly show you the documentation for scikit-learn so that when I start doing stuff, you know where stuff is coming from. So let's go ahead and instantiate the model. Let's call it DT 
and let's say d is equal to the decision tree regressor and let's just use all the default parameters and then let's put random state equal to 42 random states basically means here that if you run this code in your own local computer you get similar answers as me so random state just kind of keep everything consistent all right so now that we've instantiated the model so basically do dt the fit so basically do um this model that we instantiated right here dot fit and then we want to fit our x train too and then we want to fit our y train and in this data set my y train is my life expectancy column so as you can see here in my training data there is no life expectancy column right if we go back here to the original data frame as you can see i did a lot of cleaning before we got to this thing the modeling part and as you can see right here life expectancy was a column but i'm trying to predict the life expectancy so i removed it from my test data set and life expectancy is my y train my target value if i do y train here to kind of give you a preview of what it looks like as you can see our y train is our life expectancy column so we fit um, the model through our training data and then we run it and this is just using the custom parameters. So let's call it y bread dt is equal to dt.predict. Now we are using the predict method from the model from the library and we want to predict s test too. So we can do something like y bread dt just to get a preview of what it looks like. So this is our predictions right here and I can just um, do the first five. I don't need to see the whole thing. So this is kind of our predictions right here. So after we have built the model, we need a way to evaluate the model, right? So we've built the model, we've gotten our prediction, but how do we actually know the model is good? That is why we use metrics. So for regression there are certain metrics that you use like mean absolute error and r2 score if it's a classification problem the metrics that you use are different so since this is a regression problem we are going to be using mean absolute error and r2 score to evaluate our model to kind of see how good it is and the thing is that whenever you're working with a regression problem you want the error score to be lower you know like your goal is to get a lower error score but if you're working with like let's say a classification problem you may want to get like a higher accuracy score so from sklearn.metrics import mean absolute error r2 score and we can also get this r2 score directly from the model but we can also get it using a different metrics like this one and i'm gonna show you how to do both so mean absolute error is equal to mean absolute error so these are some of the metrics that you can use in a regression model and i'm just quickly gonna go to mean absolute error here and as you can see with mean absolute error what you provide is the true value and you provide the predicted value. Those are the parameters you need to provide at bare minimum. So here the true value that you are going to provide is our y test is our true value and our y pred dt is our predicted value. So this is what we predicted right here. And this is actually our true values. All right. So let's go ahead and um, do this. So our mean absolute error in this situation is 2.18. Now let's go ahead and get our R2 score. So R2 
is equal to R2 score. And in this situation, it's the same thing. You provide the true value and then you provide the predicted value. So our R2 score is 0 0.88 and the highest R2 score you could potentially have is 1 and the lowest you could potentially have is 0. So this is the matrix that we got from our decision decision tree regression model. Let's go ahead and compare this to what we got for the baseline model. In a different video, I'll show you how to construct a baseline model for a regression problem, problem and how to construct a baseline model for a decision for a classification problem. So I went ahead and created the baseline model and I just went ahead and copied the code for the baseline model. And again, in a different video, I show you how to do this. So our from using from our baseline, you can see that our main baseline is 68.7 years. And then our mean absolute error is 8.07 and our R2 score is 0, 0.00. So our model is performing way better than our baseline like so if i also do this just for comparison if i do y bread dot mean so our mean from our predictive value is also 68.57 not that far from our mean baseline but um, our baseline mean absolute error score is 8.07 and our decision tree model has a has mean absolute error of 2.18 our decision tree model has an r2 score of 0 0.88 and our mean baseline has an r2 score of 0, 0.00 and what does an r2 score of 0 means and what SQL learn explains it better. It says that a constant model that always predicts the expected value of y disregarding the input features will get an R2 score of zero. So basically, in a nutshell, this is how you build a decision tree regressor model. And this is one way to calculate the error scores. Like I said earlier, we could also use the decision tree model itself to get the R2 score. So if I do dt.score, and then we want to provide the S test to, right? And then we want to provide our Y test. So let's go ahead and run this. As you can see, even if we use the scoring system built into the decision tree model we get the same result as using the scikit learn auto score library so so if you want to get the r2 score you can use the built-in one and this is how you use it to provide the test and the y test and provide the s test or you can use the scikit learn r2 score module in the next video i am going to show you how to explain your decision tree regressor model so you've built your model right you've gotten a prediction and you've gotten the error scores from it but how do you actually know which features contribute the most to your model like how do you know how each feature is impacting your model which features make the most difference? Should you drop some features and focus on others? So in the next video, I am going to show you how to explain a decision tree regressor. Well, one method to explain a decision tree regressor model and find out which features are most useful and which ones are not. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. This is my primary website where you can find me online at evidencen.com and here I have data science blogs and as time goes by I'm going to add more and more stuff 
to my data science blog. And also you can find me online at machinelearningeducation.com. And if you go here, machinelearningeducation.com slash free, you'll be able to get access to my free data science resources. So this notebook that I use in today's video, you can find it here at machinelearningeducation.com slash free. And you can also go to machinelearningeducation.com and once you're here, you can click on free data science resources and be able to get access to this page. And I create a lot of blog posts and YouTube videos. And I just find it easier to take all my resources and put it under one place in one platform. So whenever you come here, you'll be able to get access to all my notebooks, all my videos and my blog posts. Again, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.